And we're joined now by the Honorable Minister of State for Energy from Uganda, Mr. Simon Dujanga. Mr. Simon Dujanga, thank you so much for taking the time. Tell us a little bit about um, the energy landscape in Uganda at the moment. How's business there? Well, it's uh, moving. We are 21% electrified, and that is uh, too low in the region, in the world. So we have an aggressive electrification program to try and reach 60% in the next five years. That is with respect to electrification. Uh, with respect to petroleum, we have had a discovery. We have confirmed 6.5 billion barrels, and we are doing two things. We are doing a refinery and a pipeline for, for crude export. In brief, that's what's going on. Now, when we look at 6.5 billion a discovery, obviously this takes a lot of work, a lot of investment. You really have to get the international oil companies on board. Is that, are you talking to some people out there at the moment to make sure? They are already on board. We have Total, we have Talo and the Sinoc from China. Uh, these have got uh, production licenses already. And uh, we have already got a, a lead investor with whom we are discussing uh, to, to do the refinery. It's going to be private with the government. The private sector will have 60% and government 40%. So we are now discussing project, uh, project framework agreement with the lead investor and I hope in the next three to five years we should be having a refinery. But this is very exciting and congratulations to you for getting this done. I mean, we heard today a lot too about discussion about energy for the poor and energy for all. And we look at the landscape of Uganda and I think you have, you, you have both to look after. You have a growing middle class, you still have some poverty in the region. You want to get people, you know, off the energy poverty. How important is this particularly in Uganda? Uh, it's very important because we have a, a growing population and there's a lot of stress on our forest cover. So what we have done, we are trying to reach the population uh, with electricity. Uh, we have realized that we can take a line to the village, but uh, the people are not rich enough to connect themselves. So government has come up with a program to connect people for free in order to move the percentage which I talked about earlier on. So we are connecting people for free. And we are also, for, for the energy charge, we have got a lifeline. We have got a, a very low price for the, the poorest. So we are doing everything possible to get accessibility in order to meet the goal, goal number seven. And of course this then will help the people develop and hopefully help small business and the economic cycle will grow and everybody will, will benefit. I mean when the, you look at the economic policy in your country and you look at the energy policy, it really must go hand in hand, really. Yes, and we have a good policy. We have a policy of private sector-led growth. So we put emphasis on the private sector. We even go out of our way to help some sub uh, private sector by giving them subsidy, by giving them incentives, uh, so that we have a strong private sector. You know, in the past we used to have government doing business. We realized that this is not possible. We can do other things like schools, hospitals, and other infrastructure uh, for, 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 for the population. But uh, things to do with the business, we have left that entirely to the private sector. But this sounds like a sensible plan. Talk to me about your time here for the last few days, meeting other ministers, meeting some of the CEOs. Has this been fruitful for you? Oh yes, I've been able to meet a number of colleagues. Yesterday we had a reception, we had a, a, a good uh, interaction. We have exchanged contacts, we have exchanged cards, and I hope from here we shall make some good progress. Now tell me, how important is the work of the International Energy Forum when it comes to bringing the ministers together in a forum like this? How important, and also the work that the International Energy Forum is doing on the data collection and really keep, keeping everybody in touch in many ways? Yes. Well, when we come together, we, we take off time, uh, we compare experiences, and then we, we, we share opportunities that are available all over the world and then we can learn from each other. We can learn from each other and most importantly we create contacts for future uh, engagements. So the, the, the two days have been very useful. Uh, I've got very good reception from the government, the people of India and I'm happy they've given us, me and my delegation, 
very cordial welcome. We are happy.